But that's what saved the United States. Yeah. What was the United States to begin was Pearl Harbor. Right. Well, you know what they was this. It was nothing because it was dumb. That's why I worked in the Netherlands, and they government. That's the reason I couldn't. I had three in the family and Navy. The government owned you. Yeah. If you stay in the Netherlands, did you get what we want done? And they were simply right. Mm -hmm. We, they give us order to get something. We had six types of machine, machines up from one base up to six. That's six drills and all different. They covered everything. They were they were really great. Edlin, but, Ed, Edlin machine became Monarch machine tool. Correct? I know that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm asking it. That yeah, first it was Edlin, and then it was Edlin Monarch. Edlin machine became yeah. Monarch. Yeah. Did, did, after you were trained in radar, did you go on a ship? Were you on a ship in World War Two? Yeah, so that's what I'm coming up to. What, um, after I went to school, uh, the first, the only ship I was on, a USS Chester T. O'Brien, which is a brand new type of destroyer, DE is a destroyer escort, and we had the old escorts with three inch guns, one on the ship, and there's 350 men on it, but the newer ships where I was, brand new ships was in Houston. They were built on high skid. They were built, so once they were commissioned, they slid down into the water. Galveston Bay is where we, our old ship was waited three weeks to get on the destroyer escort. But the brand new ships were bigger, they were longer, they had more men, they jumped from three inch guns to five inch guns, forward and aft. The other ones had just one three. Where did the ship go? Where where were you escorting them to? Well, uh, this, you took your training, uh, they call that boot training or something, in Bermuda. I was there three to five weeks in training at surface and air. That's where I got the, the Abel, Baker, and Charlie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we was there, the Japanese and Italian suburbs is only this far from New York City. They was they could look out the window and see all the skyscrapers. Oh. They were dumping us but good. But once we got our D E and our training, we got four subs. That mm -hmm. D E is 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 anti submarine. That's okay. what they get. Uh, we came in squadrons of six. Was shipped. That means when you you know what detects sonar detects the submarine or a whale, whichever. Uh huh. Once you to get it detected, you cannot imagine how a, a, our squadron of six operated. They find it. There's a target right there. Mm -hmm. We got six machines, and they're 500 feet long, with with almost 500 men instead of 350. The old, but here they you detect that submarine. Of course, you know he's in the water. Right. Three ships would go this way. <coughs> that's when it, that's a bearing. When you get a when you get a detectant, it's either a whale or a submarine, mm -hmm. and three ships go this way. They're ever so far apart. Here, 
here and here and here and here and here. And each ship has dynamite. And what do you think? And when we do that to each that has a different depth. Mm -hmm. The dynamite was nothing but 55 gallon drums of dynamite there. And there, and as these three go that way, remember there's, there's a target down there. Mm -hmm. Three, had, each one of them had a different depth where their dynamite goes off. Right. You cannot create the only way you know is an oil slick when it comes up. And if it ain't oil slick, you've got a cue stick with a little white flag where the surface where they've had enough. We, we got four submarines uh, that surface. It's a cue stick with a white flag. They were the sickest looking people I ever saw in my life. I felt sorry for them, and yet they, they bombed all of our shipping and killed us. Yeah. They had hair down here, the skinny legs about like this. Wow. Oh, malnutrition. They had hair all over. They were sick, yeah. the, the most sickly looking people I ever saw in my life, and I did feel sorry for them, even though. Well, yeah. we. We captured them. We didn't have to catch them. They come up the stop to the surface with a little white flag on. Yes. They were done, and were they ever glad to get done? Because all you had otherwise was an oil slick after these three and three gold. Right. No submarine could ever escape us. Wow. This but look at the look at the damage they done before. We developed the radar. Yes. That was phenomenal, that yeah. radar. They got me. Where did they go, though, after they surrendered? What did you do with the men that were in the submarines? Where did they go? They had to stay grouped on our orders. We took all four to Boston, Massachusetts, and what they did with them, I don't know. They had to feed them, they had to store them. They had their old ships there, which they they were ancient. Mm -hmm. Ours was brand new. Uh, the one that, that I was on was a top destroyer escort. Mm -hmm. There was no submarine that could ever escape them with a squadron of six, three, three. Each ship in the squadron had a different detonation level with which our bombs and what do you think our bombs were made of? You'll never guess. On the railroad track and iron, regular ship or barrels full of dynamite. Mm -hmm. Each had a different separation, each had a different direction. Mm -hmm. There was no escape. All you could tell was an oil slick at the top, but the little white flag was different. They were, I had enough. They were sickly, sickly looking people. Mm. And you did that for two years, you said? Well, I was in the Navy two years, but you don't do that. You take your basic training. Right. You know, in Bermuda, this, what is it? 19 miles long and this wide. Yeah. The first time I got on there, I was so happy to get off a seat segment. I rented a bicycle and I rode the whole length, I think it was 19 miles. Mm -hmm. Just for it, because you got to drive on the other side of the street because mm -hmm. they're British on it. Mm -hmm. The you, Brit. You said that you, they sent you to prison. It, it, yes, I did. Uh, how, how long were you there? I was sentenced for five days, but I got out in four. Okay. They just, they knew that was, that captain was too strict, but mm -hmm. I got out for Well, it was no fun. When you went to prison, you wore prison clothes, orange and black, and on the back of it, P-O-W. You couldn't move. Every time you made a corner, there was a guard, and all the guards were Marines. Yes. 
the Marines are tougher than the sailors. Mm -hmm. If you open your mouth, she was down there, uh -huh. count, counting her teeth. Or how many <laughs> have I got left? I'll tell my husband that. He was a Marine. Who was that? My husband. I <laughs> wish I could talk to him yeah. and tell him what the Marines were like. They're the toughest people I've ever saw in my life. They are tough. I know. <laughs> they are. I know too. He was a guard after he left oh, Vietnam. He, he was a guard. He was amongst the top most bitter hated people. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. Well, you march, well, you had to go to lunch. You're in prison. There's so many bars. I'm talking about Auburn State Prison, which is only here this bar. Right. The walls are six of that, and the up high, and every Every uh, 50 feet there's a guard. He's up there. He's just waiting to shoot. Mm. Anything that wiggled, if you didn't follow orders, he was dead. Oh. They had no mercy. Mm. You must have followed orders. Well, I had it the easiest. Why? Because they took the one with the least sentence. He carried the coffee. They all went to coffee every morning, 8 o'clock. You had their red and orange and black prisoner of wars. Well, they marched in units, you know. Yeah, I mean in units, but I was the only one that marched beside them because I carried the, the coffee cup for the Marines because my sense was unreal for what the judge judge gave me that net and the guards knew that but they were merciless. Naples. The most devastation I ever saw in my life because it's on the hill not by us. It was a ship that got there before. Because in Naples the bay I counted personally 54 parts of the ships sticking out of the water or under the water, or use them for a bay. That's why our Navy, we had six million Navy men. Half of them was in Norfolk. We had enough sailors in Norfolk to lick the world. Yeah. When the ship come in there, the first thing you see was a rowboat, because all they wanted was cigarettes, sex, and sugar. It's six things. Yeah. And, and, and a carton of cigarettes. Uh, in the United States was, was worth six dollars. You know what a carton is? How many? Mm -hmm. Ten packs in a carton? Right. But over there it was worth eighteen dollars. Wow. So the smart sailors went off of the the ship to there. Mm -hmm. they, they went like this bow-legged. You know why? <laughs> <laughs> they rolled up the, the seat, Dutch tape, Carton of cigarettes on this ah. leg there, and <laughs> they were the smart ones. <laughs> yeah. But sounds like it. If you had a cigarette in your mouth in Italy, them girls, they all grab you and see me virgin, uh, oh. but they follow you for the cigarette. But they'd follow you for four miles if you was for the butt. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I left the Virginia ten years ago. <laughs> no, they were dirty and they didn't have it, anything. War is war over there. We had it easy over in Bermuda. It was company. It was fun. Good. In Bermuda. Yeah. Well, you get your training uh, back track. The airplanes go on. They have the flag. Carrying flags for the, our five-inch guns would knock them out of the air. It's just plain training. Is rigid, eight hours, to eight hours. Why you don't know half of it, but we had to. Right. Well, when we got over there, see our squadron of six protected their troop ships that went over. Here you got 40,000 men to go and fight in Leghorn, but to jump them, you got to, we went to, had to stop in Algiers, where, oh, incidentally, all the houses, they're pink. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. He, he liked pink. And, and, and every house he was had a pink roof. In Algiers, I'm talking okay. about. I don't know what there's over there now. I don't care. But right. we had to get fuel there. After you go so far. Yeah. You've got to refuel. Right. Well, from there, we, we went into Naples and anchored there, and that's where I could count. In the bay alone, 54 ships. How many was down there? We had a navy that you could not believe. They could look the world. Mm -hmm. Did you stay in Naples very long, or did you go somewhere else? Oh, no, from Naples. You came back, and here's the best part of it. We never, Sonar never detected one submarine on the way over. But in New York City, you take a hat off, look over, you got a Japanese and Italian submarine there shooting the, the skyscrapers. Oh, oh. Wasn't that funny? It's terrible. Oh, you can't imagine. We want to hear more about Blodgett Mills. Well, like I say, it was a mountain. What they got, shale rock, the, the, the side was in layers of sheet, you know, layers of rock. And I had the best drinking water ever, ever come mm -hmm. out of the sea, sailed the way up the, mm -hmm. up the hill. Did you live up above or down in, near the river? I was down near the river, and that's the, that's the bottom. Right. Was the Grange building there then, the stone building on the corner? It was a natural, normal thing, and we had the wheels for... Remember, there was not war then, it was prior. Grist mill, you know, the farmers brought the thing in and the wheel 14 foot in diameter and every foot and a half you have a bucket that picks up water and dumps it that, that creates the power to for the for the wheels go around. I, 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 I only remember one wheel but my sister remembered two of them. I don't know, she was in the waves incidentally. Did you live on Blodgett Hills after the Navy? Blodgett Mills. Blodgett Mills. Mm -hmm. Did you live there after the Navy? I, I was in, I was in Blodgett long before I got in the Navy. Right. Remember, I was 20, 23 years old when I joined the Navy. Right. I, I couldn't go out and join the Navy. The government said you build machines right here in Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Every time you went in Netherlands, you had guards there. You couldn't sit without them knowing it. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, and in the rain, my ex-wife and her twin sister used to walk all the way from Homer down to Adam, and we had the nicest guards, I still remember the names of them, that let you go out in the fence and talk. Oh. Boy, they were strict. When you were done in the war, you were there for three years, you got out of the Navy, and then where did you live? Oh, well, I I got, I, I managed to get out of Edlands after three, six months building. They governed it. You couldn't, if you went, went off of the limits, across the street was a ball field. They knew it. Mm -hmm. But when we played ball, I played for two championship teams. Wow. We went across and played ball, and all the time that we was gone, they paid us. Oh. And was that the greatest? Yeah. Got well, paid for playing. Oh. <laughs> that was the best job I ever had. You could play ball and get paid. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Remember. Did you get married when you came back? Did you get married and have a family? Uh, yes. We, uh, Lorraine wanted to get married. She insisted. No, I got married when I was in the service. I didn't want to get married. She did. She, uh, yeah, I, I got married uh, when I got 
she insisted that I got a 10-day leave, which amounted to only seven because she didn't have her blood tests come back from Syracuse and lost three days. But, uh, yeah, we got married in Homer, in what church on? St. Margaret's. What? St. Margaret's. No, on the Pittsburgh, you know, where the church was. It ain't there no more. They built a brand new one. I was on construction when you asked me. I went back. Mm -hmm. All I ever did build uh, from daylight till dark. Wow. We built that church. It was married in. Well, I wasn't married in the church. It was a grass lot in between. Because mm -hmm. the old church was here, then there was a grass lot, and here's a brand new church on a burning construction. I remember I built that church, and I worked as a carpenter. I don't know how much an hour until it was finished. Mm -hmm. You have Rain, a daughter? Three. Three babies? Green had three. Right, okay. But so the youngest one has been dead how long? A long time. She was, she married a state trooper and is still alive. Oh, good. He don't know nothing, but <laughs> if I went up there, he don't know who I am. He's lost, he's been in that long. Oh. Wow. But I, I had a good memory and a good mind. I don't know how or why, but I had, well in school, it, you know, seventh grade, Roger Mills took the test. I got a hundred. Anybody in the seventh grade could take the eighth grade test which came from Albany the next week. I took that. I got a hundred in that. Wow. No eighth grader got a hundred. Then from there, I went to the, the best seniors at that one year was allowed to go to college six months early in school. Mm -hmm. That's where I went. And when I got in there, they had a, they had all kinds of stuff. You know what trigonometry is? Yep. Something really hard. Huh? <laughs> Very hard. I took that test. Wow. I was the only one that got a hundred. Wow. And I kept the paper and I bet that Kenny destroyed it. I'm sure he did. But it don't mean nothing anymore. But a hundred and trig, there was nobody that I could find it. it You're just so intelligent. Good. Yeah. Trig is hard. I bet. The only one that's worse is solid geometry, and I said, I don't want no part of it. <laughs> Where did you, you said you went to college. Where did you go to, to college? College? I, did, I don't know if I St. was, Lawrence. I mentioned college. St. Lawrence? Your daughter says St. Lawrence. There, now you mentioned a thing. I was supposed to go to St. Lawrence, and I'm talking about trigonometry, because mm -hmm. my uncle was the head of the math petition. This, this is part of the war, because instead of me going to college, Hitler changed plans. Okay. Yep. And, and my, his name was John Smith. See, my grandma was married three times, and he was the head of the math part. But here's the best part. We're doing the relative. He arranged it so I could get free tuition, and I lived in his house for free, but I never got there. Adolf Hitler changed plans. Okay. Where was the school in Blodgett Mills? You said you went to school. Oh, it was all together, right here. I think it's here. The school was right here, and I got a picture of it. Hmm. It was eighth grade in it. Hmm. And, and across, well, it was four corners. Green's Hall was on my right, where I went when I was at high to Green's Hall dances, and my mother tried to get me to square dance, and I wouldn't do it. The Green's Hall was eight sides around, no windows, right. just 
and the outside the bench comes up this high, everybody sat on the bench, except the leader sat in the middle of this mm -hmm. thing on a chair. There's the Grange Hall, and across from that, the Baptist Church, then the Methodist Church, mm -hmm. then the school is on. Remember, this is the Four Corners. Right. I know. The that's the Keller World right now. Right. Yep. And in the main street, they had one store. Uh, George Bowen operated the store down there next to the railroad track. And that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Back next to the railroad track, the, the farmers used to come with wagons. Everything was wheeled on a wagon, bring their dairy milk mm -hmm. and store it in this big building next to the railroad tracks, next to the school. And the, it went all the track. There was four sets of tracks at that time. Now there's only one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all the milk went to New York City. After the Dairy D, that was the name of the company, got done, it became a cheese factory. We used to go in there and, and make cheese and the, the uh, farmers or whoever was there had rakes standing in the, there was oval dishes, 20 feet long, six feet with hip boats, go in there with rakes, six feet long and about six blades on each one to stand there and rake by the hour the cheese when they got all done the cheese come 50 pounders this big around and this high and the cheese curd for today <coughs> the kids you go in the courtyard and get cheese curd and you keep it long enough you had cheese but we knew them we lived right back of them because after that villain became a cheese factor, it became P.D. Camp Slaughterhouse.